This is my rotary table for the mill over there. You crank this and it rotates and that's, that's pretty much it. It can be horizontal or it can be vertical. It's a very simple thing. And I thought I would make a very simple addition for it, which is an extender plate, because I need to cut some concave radii on pieces. And this being eight inches in diameter and eight inches being about what I want for the other diameter as well, this piece would have to be out here. There's no way to hold it. And even for a little bit smaller pieces, one thing that I've knew but didn't really appreciate before is that with woodworking you tend to clamp whatever piece you're working with down to your support piece whereas with metalworking if you have it on here you have to clamp usually up off of your work surface and then back down onto the piece to hold it there and you end up needing more room so an extender plate comes in very very handy and being a simple thing this should be pretty pretty simple and easy to make right well, it turned out to be a bit more of a production than I expected, but it was fairly straightforward. I started off trying to make this thing flat. This is just hot roll. I tried to clamp it down, have a, the hump up, since it's not perfectly flat, and shim it. That didn't work very well. So what I ended up doing was just picking the flattest area, which was pretty flat, and trying to bolt it on here. Bolting it on there ended up being a little tricky because you need to have your fastener below the surface, and I didn't have a way to counterbore the largest screw, or the one that's large enough to go for your standard T-nuts. So then I had to make my own T-nuts, like this, which are set up for a smaller screw, which I could counter bore. This is why we have two sets of holes in here, but it ended up being a little bit convenient because then we have, for example, these fasteners holding this to here, and then if I want to have things on there. But if I really want to mount something heavy duty to this wider plate, I can reach down into the T-nut, the full-size one, which is down in the plate as well. So it gives me some more options, it's not really a big deal. When I started with this, it was square or rectangular, and the obvious choice to get the corners cut off was with a cutting torch. But the problem with my cutting torch, which is over there, is that it's been at least 20 years since there was any maintenance on the regulators, and I'm really not inclined to fudge the safety factor with 4,000 PSI of oxygen. There are some things that I'm willing to fudge a little bit on the official recommended safety line, but flammable, explosive, high pressure gases is not one of them. Since I didn't have those, what I did was I took my roughing mill and I ran that guy around the side. I started off with the square corners and took it down to an octagon, and then I just started cranking and milled off the edges. Cranking this was fairly difficult so I ended up using some kind of odd body mechanics because I was trying to use my body weight to crank it. This ended up being about two hours of just cranking and cranking, which was a lot of work. I can still feel it in my arm. It's been a couple days. I used a lot of coolant and it was accumulating in the bottom of the, the table there. Unfortunately, there was a set screw. I was able to drain it out and reuse some of it. This is where flood coolant would have been handy because it was steaming away. There were a lot of chips piling up and I actually grabbed a good chunk of those because I thought with magnets or something there may be a good use for those with experiments. And I weighed it and those were two and a half pounds just for the ones I gathered there, which was not even all of them. That's almost a kilo. And I would say that's less than 50% of the chips that I created. After we got it all milled off, I just cleaned up the edge with a regular end mill, filed down the edges and it looked pretty good. I also tried face milling on the surface and that didn't work particularly well. So I gave up on that and just fly cut the entire thing as carefully as I could. I threw a test indicator on the side and it came out with a range of about eight thousandths from the highest to the lowest point, with most of that difference being where it transitioned from one cut to the other, which I can actually feel with my hand right there. Eight inches is good enough for me. If I'm gonna do anything special, I'm gonna indicate it in anyway. And considering this is my first time around, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. I left a flat spot on the front here, partly so I didn't have to mill it any further. And also I was able to stamp it with 300 degrees and that just tells me what the orientation is to bolt it on here and hopefully maintain some of that flatness since it's in its original orientation when I did mill it. Something I found frustrating in the past is having to chase around after specific parts. I'm thinking mainly of auto suppliers here, going from place to place trying to find a specific part. I don't have the capability to make many parts on a car, but I have modified a few and it was very helpful. And this whole thing just reminds me of something I really liked about lumber, which is that 
you can make whatever you need. If you're doing a floor and you need a really funny transition piece, you don't have to order it from online. You go and find some lumber, which is a similar match in grain and everything, cut it however, mill it, and finish it up with a similar sheen, and you're on your way. You're done. You have control over it. And I'm getting that, I'm gaining that capability with metal, with the mill and the lathe and the welder, and that's really satisfying. Nothing too dramatic yet, but just being able to do things like this, where you have a T-nut, and this one, it's the wrong size, and I had to change it, and you know what? Fine. I have some metal over there I'd squared up before. Made my own T-nuts. Done. <laughs> Problem solved, and I can just move on. And I, I really, really like that. Even though sometimes it can be kind of time confusing, you have the, the power over it, and you don't have to depend on other people as much. And it's also just faster. So when it's 11 o'clock at night and you just really need this thing, you can just make it and you're done. So it's a pretty simple project today, just a flat plate, but it ended up being quite a bit of work. So I hope it comes in useful.